When we talk about acid-base balance, we are concerned with maintaining normal hydrogen ion concentrations in bodily fluids. Because hydrogen ion concentrations in bodily fluids is so small, we express it as a logarithmic function called pH. Now, it is not important to remember this equation, it is just here to show that when we talk about pH, we are speaking about hydrogen ion concentration. It is important to remember, however, that as the concentration of hydrogen ions increases, pH will decrease, and vice versa. As the concentration of hydrogen ions decreases, pH will increase. Let's do an example. Let's say you start with a hypothetical hydrogen ion concentration of 3. If you add more hydrogen ions to the solution, what will happen to the pH? pH in this situation will decrease. This is the pH scale, which ranges from 0 to 14. And this is us. This is where the pH of the human body roughly lies, between 7.35 and 7.45. This tight value is achieved by intracellular and extracellular buffers, by respiratory mechanisms that excrete carbon dioxide, and by renal mechanisms that reabsorb bicarbonate and secrete hydrogen ions. In other words, pH is maintained by buffers in our body controlled by our lungs and kidneys. So, let's break this down. This is the equilibrium equation for how hydrogen ions are carried in our body. The byproduct of cellular metabolism is carbon dioxide, which mixes with water in equilibrium with carbonic acid, which is also in equilibrium with bicarbonate and hydrogen. Remembering back to your basic chemistry principles of equilibrium, if substrates on one side increases, it drives the production of substrates on the other side of the equation, causing them to increase as well. So, for example, an increase in cellular metabolism results in an increase in carbon dioxide production, which will, by our principles of equilibrium, eventually lead to an increase in hydrogen ions, resulting in a decrease in pH. This leads us to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which is another equation which you don't really need to remember except for the relationship between bicarb and CO2. As the amount of bicarb in the body increases, pH also increases. As the concentration of bicarb decreases, so does the pH. Note that the relationship here is that pH is directly proportional to bicarb. As the amount of carbon dioxide increases, pH will decrease. Conversely, as the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases, pH will increase. You notice that the relationship between pH and carbon dioxide is inversely proportional. Alright, so let's do another example. Let's say a person stops breathing and the concentration of carbon dioxide increases in their blood. What will happen to this person's overall pH? In this case, because the concentrations of carbon dioxide increase, there will be a decrease in overall pH. And our last example, let's say a person has an increase in overall body concentrations of bicarbonate. What will happen to this person's pH? An increase in bicarbonate concentration of the body will lead to an increase in pH.